So it's uh, I'm Steve. I'm I'm here again to do another set of uh, just thoughts based on the Bible. Remember, this isn't like a deep theological teaching. This is just some thoughts that I have on reading part of the book of James to maybe give you guys some thoughts uh, or a starting point for you to talk about the Bible with other people or to think about how it might apply to your life. Um, I want to apologise as well because last week I did say that we were finishing James 4 and we didn't. <laughs> Actually, this week we're finishing James 4, uh, looking at verses 13 to 17. So sorry about that. A little misleading. Obviously brain not in gear. So, But here we go. So let me read to you James 4. Verses 13 to 17. Now, listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes, and all such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So there we go. James talking about, again, just what's it mean when we submit to God in terms of our future. These verses deal with three things, really. It deals with plans. It deals with how we talk. Uh, about our futures publicly and it also talks about living in God's will. So let's not forget that James 4 uh, is actually the title of it was Submit to God and again what I love is James gives us some practical advice on how we can be submitting to God with our lives. If we're not a people submitting our futures to God are we a people who are actually submitting to God? And so God doesn't want us to just submit our present to him, but our futures and our plans for the future as well. And now it's easy to read something like this and, and almost have a adverse reaction and go, well, are you saying I shouldn't make plans at all? I don't think God's saying that. I think this verse, these verses talk about how we make plans and how we speak of our plans. I believe that these verses are saying, when you make plans, don't leave God out of them. God may give us a general direction we're heading in. God may show us what our next step is. But rarely will God give us the whole finished picture of exactly where we will be in a year's time. He guides us. He gives us that general direction. And if we're a people who are submitting to God, then actually we need to not get caught up in the detail. But we need to just be obedient and be stepping out into that next step of what God has for us. And in the general direction of travel he has for us. Holding it lightly. Because actually we don't know the complete will of God. And the complete will of God is a, it was a mystery to us at times. Therefore, we can't really guarantee where we're going to be in 12 months time or what we're going to be doing in 12 months times. And actually, James says that to do this publicly, to say to people publicly, you know what, in 12 months time, I'm going to be living here. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be uh, having this job. I'm going to feel like this. Actually, we can't guarantee that. We can't know all of the ins and outs of God's will. And so when we guarantee that publicly, we're setting ourselves up for a fall. And also we run the risk of um, being wrong and not being in the will of God. It is good to have plans. It is really, really good to have plans. But it's also really important that we hold them lightly. We should be saying things like, in a year's time, I'd love it if I was here, God willing. In a year's time, I'd love it if I was doing this, but God willing. And actually that phrase, God willing, says, I would love to be here, but I also what I want more than what I'd like is the will of God to be done in my life. It's good to think about what our life might look like in a year's time, but we must include God in our planning. We must include God in our dreaming. We must listen to God and we must hold our plans and our dreams up to God and allow God to change them according to his will. Because submitting to God means being in his will. 
to publicly speak of what our future will look like is a dangerous game because other people can hold us to that. And sometimes when we know that, when we've said to so many people in a year's time, I'm definitely going to be doing this. What can happen is we, be, we can blinker ourselves by saying that. And we stop thinking about what God might be saying about that direction. And we go, well, I've told people this is what I'm going to be doing. So no matter what, I am going this way. I'm doing this. I must make this direction work. I must make this goal work. And actually what we end up doing sometimes by blinkering ourselves, we take God out of the equation and we start traveling forward in our own strength, in our own will, not the will of God. Does this mean that we shouldn't talk about our futures? No. Does it mean that we shouldn't talk about our plans? No, it doesn't. But when we do, whether we're talking to believers or non-believers, we must always talk about our dreams, our plans and our futures, humbly also explaining that we'd like to do this in the will of God. Subject to the will of God. And actually what this does then is it gives us a chance to talk about God's being a, um, the director of our lives. God setting the general direction. God's word being a lamp to our feet. It gives us the opportunity to talk about uh, him and how he is the focal point of our lives, not ourselves. So when we include God in our plans and our goals and we speak of God in our plans and our goals with others and we submit to God in our plans and goals, God gets more and more seen in our lives. And in the lives of those around us, in our conversations. And that's what I want to see. We are called to live expectantly that God will move, lead, guide, speak and direct. What we're not called to do is live in human expectation. Human expectation is not great. God expectancy is brilliant. What do I mean? I mean that sometimes we can have an expectation of an outcome. This is what I will be doing. I expect me to be here. I expect this to happen. But actually, that's our expectation. And we then um, that's not great, because actually what that does is that holds out the bone and goes, this is about a human thing. Whereas actually we're called to be a people who live expectantly, knowing that God will move, God will lead, God will guide. And we might know we might not know what that is. But we're expectant that he will and we will submit to him in moving in that direction, no matter what our human expectation might be. I know in a year's time, my life will look different than it does now if I'm submitting to the will of God. And I am expectant of that. But I'm not going to say I know in 12 months time my life will look like this because I don't know that. Submitting to God means fully submitting our expectations on him as well. God doesn't have to fulfill our own expectations. He's God, but he will move and he will act. The biggest question is, will we move and act with him? And that's a massive challenge. Verse 16 is, again, really strongly worded. Let me read it to you again. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. That's really hard. Why is that? Why is James saying that talking and boasting of our own futures is evil? Why? Because when we talk about we're definitely going to be here and we're definitely going to be doing that. Actually, what we're saying is we're going to do this in our own strength. This is my future, my expectation, my outcome, and I will do this. What we're actually saying is we're hung up on our expectation of our future not God's. More hung up on what my will is than what God's will might be. Saying that we're in charge of our own destiny and future, but actually submitting to God means we submit our destiny and future to him, allowing him to direct us. We put ourselves in God's place and instead of humbly submitting our lives and future, we go, no matter what God says, I'm doing this. That's why James calls it evil. That's why he calls it a sin, because it is a sin to choose our way over God's way. Make plans, yes, but hold them humbly and lightly before God, allowing him to shape us and shape them and guide us. It's easy to get caught up in the trap of I'm going to be here. In fact, that's part of what the, the world tempts us to think and say. And then verse 17 is almost a set of notes within itself. I could do a whole message based solely on verse 17. 
And it reads clear enough in the NIV translation, which is what I read, but I love even more the NLT translation. Let me read it to you. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Let me read that again. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. There's not a lot that you can unpack from that. It reads clear enough. Do we know what God is asking us to do? If we do, then do it. And if we don't do what we know God is asking to do, we are choosing sin because we're choosing ourselves over the will of God. If we are a people who are submitting to God, then we must be a people willing to do whatever it is God is asking of us, no matter what that could mean for us, no matter how we feel about it. We must be a people who are ready to do that not just in our presence, but with our futures as well. And what if you don't know what is the general direction of what God is asking? What if you don't know the grand plan? Do you know what? That's fine, because we all know what we should be doing. We should be loving God and we should be loving each other as best as we can. That should always be our direction of travel. So will we submit to God and do it? Let's be a people to submit to God and commit to his way over our own. And when we do that, we'll see more of the kingdom of God here. So have a great week. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Stay safe. Follow the government guidelines. And um, I can't wait to unpack James 5 with you next week.